The story of Ghana and his alleged interaction with Fulani headsmen raises curiosity and questions. Could his claim that the headsmen have a plan to take over communities be true, especially with the increase in attacks of not just farmers, but communities? The activities of the Fulani headsmen have been recorded in Taraba, Benue, Nasarawa, Kwara, Oyo, Plateau, Ogun, Delta, Edo, and in most recent times, Enugu State, the second in the state in 2016. This time in Ndiago Ataku in Nkanu West local government area, where two persons have been killed. My people are crying on daily basis that they should leave the, the, the community. They will leave their land for us. We, I, we don't sign any agreement with them. They don't pay us any rent. Nothing. How can someone just carry his cows, come to farmland, destroy people with this thing, and, and, and sometimes come and attack the person? Without them, we don't have any crash with them before now. Having on the spot assessments uh, of what happened, and thereafter, we were able to make a deployment to the place to avert uh, further incident and to reassure the people uh, that uh, their life is secured and all that. ...have gotten the attention of the world, so much that Hertz men have been named the fourth deadliest terrorist group by the Global Terrorism Index, having killed about 1,200 in Nigeria between 2010 and 2014. Solving this lingering issue has formed the topic of discussion in the country for a while. There's been the call for meetings and discussions involving the cattle owners. These cattle owners, these husbands, owe allegiance to some people. There are people who own these cactus. Why not initiate a robust dialogue process? Involving the stakeholders, including government, on the way forward, government has the capacity to address this problem. Because when you talk of governance or government, you are talking indeed of two key elements, security and welfare of the people. Both of these, these are elements entrusted in the hands of the government. Government can initiate the dialogue process. Identify, lift the veil to see the real people behind the curtain. Identify the land, the cattle owners, and engage in a robust dialogue with them. Distinguished colleagues, if you recollect, from the federal government, the National Grazing Bill, which will create a grazing reserve. This has now scaled through the second reading in the Senate and is a proposed solution, although many Nigerians say they are not comfortable with giving out their land to be used by headsmen. We have said it repeatedly that grazing and cattle roots path is no longer fashionable in Nigeria. And so globally, what is fashionable? what is obtainable in breeding or rearing cattle is ranching. And the Minister of Agriculture has taken it upon himself to convince Nigerians otherwise. Definitely the only way forward to comply with international standards is to go the way of ranching. What I want to appeal to Nigerians To do is to give us a little bit of time. We have to educate the headsmen. We are doing that now. We have to create the ranches. We are doing that now. A thin line between solving the headsmen attack issue and managing amnesty. That seems to be the foundation of issues raised on this episode of the program. How can Nigeria better manage this? Talk to us on Big Story. I'm Amy Thompson.